and we're live. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Sean and you are watching my Pagan channel. Uh, this is going to be a twofer video. Um, first part is going to be an update about what's been going on in the life and times of Sean. <laughs> and uh, as an added bonus, I'll be doing another book recommendation. So, let us begin. Um, first thing that happened, um, I got a second job, a little side job. It doesn't pay a lot, but it's, it's good. Um, I have a second job as a tarot reader at a local pagan shop. Um, it's about an hour drive away, so it does take a little bit of gas to get there, but it's worth it because I get to have practice in the professional tarot reading field especially when it comes face to face, and I also am learning how to run a pagan shop. A shop based solely on selling goods for the pagan community, which I do want to open at some point in my life. So I might as well get the experience now! <laughs> um, second bit of update information, um, my Pagan Channel's one year anniversary will be next month on, I believe it is the 20th of January. It's either the 20th or the 25th of January. So I just want to put that out there. So if you guys had any recommendations for a one year anniversary video, please send them my way. Because honestly, I have no clue what to do. So, it's number two. It's number three. Three um, work has been going crazy, so that's the reason why I haven't been able to post anything. I've just been too tired to deal with stuff on the side when it comes after work, so I've just been really tired recently, and it's about to pick up again. So I decided I might as well start working on making some videos and get back into the swing of things. So um, that's pretty much the update portion of this video and the next portion book recommendation time yeah I probably should never do that voice again um <laughs> uh, it is going to be on a book called Animal Speak The Spiritual and Magical Powers of Creatures Great and Small by Ted Andrews let us begin so, first off, yes, I do have notes. Y'all should know this by now. I don't do anything without having notes because this can't stay focused without something like this. And it's not really a lot. It's just a really quick video. So, small notes, but good book. First thing about this book, like I do with a, one of the make or break things for me when it comes to books, is how well separated is each bit of information based on what that piece of information is. The biggest thing for me is the table of contents when it comes to stuff like this. Table of contents here is broken down into four different parts, um, each focusing on a different type of creature. Um, the first part is just symbolism of nature, and then the, it also goes into uh, spiritual and magical roles of nature, how to find your animal totems, um, just things in the animal world that relate to the spiritual world as well. Uh, second part is called Winged Enchantment. It is based solely for the purpose of learning about ways to communicate with animal guides that are birds, as well as an encyclopedic knowledge on a bunch of birds. Pretty much it. The second section is um, on mammals, such as you got your panthers, your wolves, your elk, your whole menagerie of mammals. And it does include um, the bat because it is a mammal, it just flies, uh, the whale, the orca, and the, uh, the dolphin. So um, yeah, both of them are animals. They may be aquatic creatures, but they're mammals. Uh, and the Fourth section, because I was about to go say third, and I already said third, so the fourth section is for insects and reptiles. Uh, it goes into um, the insight of the world of insects, and then goes into insect totems, 
and then moves on into reptiles and then reptile totems. And the final bit is conclusion totems in a civilized world, which basically is how spiritual guides and totems and our practice has adapted to work with the current world that we are dealing with. Ooh, wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. Ah, Doctor Who reference. Easter egg! Wow, I am random today. Sorry. So, I'm not cutting any of this. So, <laughs> y'all get every bit of crazy today. But, um, yes, the content is really good. Uh, it focuses on knowledge of creatures, great and small, like in the title, and how they relate to the different uh, aspects of your world. Whether or not uh, they'll be able to help you with your spiritual awakening, uh, love life, business, and how to call up on different totems for different purposes. Because you've got different totems for different purposes. I could make a video on that. That could be a recommendation for my year, my one year anniversary video. Hey, put that in the list. So, um, as well as uh, different ways to interact, it's a very, very good book for learning how to get into contact with your spirit guides, and as well, um, how to discover your totems, how to work with them, different things that you can do. Um, in one section, I think it was under the uh, third section, it was talking about how to invoke your spiritual totem in a way to shapeshift. And not like physical, like you're actually going to turn into the animal. No, it means shape-shifting as in shape-shifting your energy to align with that creature, to better harness what its magical abilities are to help you through a problem. Such as um, when I'm channeling my uh, the Black Panther totem that I work with, whenever I channel him to just help me get through the day without gutting anybody, it gets... It's pretty bad. So what I do to help uh, invoke Black Panther for control over my temper, because that's one of the things that they discuss about the Black Panther. Black Panther being able to con consciously control over 250 muscles in his body all at once, consciously control those. Black Panther totem is a good total, well, not specifically Black Panther, but Panther in general. But anyway. In general, Panther is good for self-control, self-awareness, because of the fact that, as in, like, it can control 250 muscles consciously in its body, you can look to yourself and control those urges that you have to want to just snap at a person and just be like, stop and bring it back. So whenever I, like, uh, the things I do whenever to actually invoke my uh, spiritual guide, the Black, uh, the Black Panther, is my hands turn into claws. And this happens unconsciously sometimes, too. But it's like, I know I need to calm the hell down, so my hands, like, get like this, as if, like, it's a, pan uh, it's a cat's paw, but the claws are extended to, like, know that y you have these claws. You could go for the jugular, but you're not. So I hope that my rambling made sense. But anyway, yeah. So, all in all, I want to give this book a really good recommendation. However, there is a one thing that I did not like about the book. Well, two things. One is that it does tend to focus a little bit more on certain animals over others. I would ass assume that's because there's more base knowledge for certain animals. Like if you look at a uh, fox. Fox literally has like three and a half pages dedicated to itself alone. Whereas um, Blue Jay has like half a page. And I understand that there's more basis for foxes, wolves. What the hell is going on with my camera? There's something weird going on with my camera. All right, anyway. Let's just hope none of y'all go have an epileptic seizure on me from this. Huh. That's weird. 
I might be because my air kicked on, but I don't think that that should do that. But yeah, nice ugly face, right? Huh. But um, but no, like it does focus on certain animals more because there's more base knowledge. So if you're looking for like a, an obscure type of a creature, like uh, let's get an example. Wow, duck has a lot. If you're looking for, say, choo -choo 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 -choo, let me get to here because I am slow. Yeah, like cat really like only has like half of one page and a quarter and a third of another page, so it barely makes up a single page. Whereas Fox starts on page 271 at the bottom, like the last third, and then gets one, two, three, four, five full pages and another two thirds. So it gets like six pages of content. So that's uh, that's one thing that I did not like about this book is that it focused more on certain animals. I will assume, though, that it's more because of the fact that there's more of a magical basis for certain creatures. There's more base knowledge that can be expanded upon, more myths that can be looked into. But still, I wish that they wouldn't, they would condense it, because some of the times, uh, some of the content does get repetitive. So that's problem number one I have with the book. Problem number two is that there was no section on aquatic creatures. Like, literally, the only two aquatic creatures in this book are the orca and dolphin, or porpoise, I think it's porpoise in here. Porpoise. Yeah. Uh, and seriously, the camera is gonna freak. You know what, I'm just gonna post it up as this. This is a one shot video. One shot, ha! BAP fans out there, I hope you get the reference. But um, but no, no, do, 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 yeah, I think it's in here as a dolphin. But yeah, no, you've only got two aquatic creatures in here when there's a literally a whole ocean full of different creatures out there that you could have added in to the section. To, like, have their own section, really. Because, honestly, the lack of fish in there... Like, what if someone really wanted to know about a specific type of fish? The, the best thing that they could do is they, let's hope that someone would thumb through this beforehand thinking that there would be fish in here. But there isn't, there's no section on fish. But again, I digress. There's no section on fish, which I feel like that's an entire bit of the animal kingdom that does need to be recognized. And unfortunately, it's not in there because maybe the editors, the the publishers didn't want to have a book that probably could have been like this much thicker than what it already was. Because y'all know that there are a bunch of fish out there that can be used. So, yeah, we all know this. Oceans are full of them. But anyway, again, I need to rest. Yeah. Those were my two main problems with it is that it focused on certain animals more than any other ones, and some of them got shafted on their sections, and two was because there was nothing on any sort of aquatic creatures other than aquatic mammals, which were only two in there. So all in all though, the information in there is good. It's great. It's good for beginners especially, and it's a great reference for those who have been practicing for an extended period of time, and I really am going to... <sighs> this camera. Does this ha is this because I didn't use you for such a long time after I bought you? I Sorry, I'm talking to my camera. Anyway. It's totally sane. That's totally normal. Right? But yeah, I digress. Um, all in all, animal speak, two thumbs up. I give it, on a scale of one to ten, I give it an eight because there's, um, it's good. It's a good encyclopedic knowledge for those of us who have been practicing for an extended period of time, and it's good for beginners to learn how to work with spirit guides, find their spirit guides and animal totems, how to work with them, and what they mean. 
But again, like any other book that deals with encyclopedic knowledge, cross-reference with multiple sources, um, internet, other books, different authors, because you're going to get biased whenever it comes to a specific author. <laughs> so we're <even> with, <coughs> Anyway. But, um... Again, it lost two points for me, be mostly because of the fact that it doesn't have a section on fish. I'm sorry I'm sounding like I'm fish crazy, but give the fish their due. They're just as important to the ecosystem as well as their spiritual lives, lives, heh, lives as mammals, birds, and insects and reptiles. So don't shaft an entire section of the animal kingdom. That's my only issue with this, other than... and. Some animals got shafted based on the fact that there's little to no information about them in the spiritual world. Other than that, again, all in all, great book. So, would I recommend this to beginners? Hell yes. Would I recommend this to intermediate practitioners? Hell yes. Would I recommend this to veterans who have not heard of Ted Andrews or heard of this book? Although, honestly, I don't know how you wouldn't hear about it if you've been practicing for a long period of time. Hell yes, I would recommend this, because this is an amazing book. So, that concludes my video um, update slash rant about, um, about animal speak, spiritual and magical powers of creatures great and small. Yeah, just call it Animal Speak. It's too long of a title. Um, anyway, so whether it be morning, noon, and night, I wish you all many blessings. Uh, hope y'all had a happy Yule. And hope y'all have a good new year. And again, my one year anniversary for this channel is coming up soon. So uh, if you could, in the comments below, um, please give me some suggestions. Because... Again, this channel is for those who want to learn and want to expand their knowledge on subjects that they don't know much about. And in turn, I learn more about certain subjects too. Hell, I gave a class on Hindu deities after attending an open circle for a few weeks. So, just saying, this is, this is a community channel. It's for the community and based for the community to learn. So again, um, whether it be morning, noon, or night, I wish you all many blessings. If I don't stop this video right now, it's going to become 20 minutes and it's going to be a pain in the butt to upload, especially when it's HD. So I wish you all many blessings. Blessed be.